anybody could do what he did given the level of commitment and putting themselves at risk. And like I said, we don't often go there at all. And uh, matter of fact, even, uh, I think these days it's even less so, because I know like, uh, like uh, for example, like, like Greenpeace, a lot of them, they have moved away from the civil disobedience they have moved away from the, a lot of the, the, like the toxic direct action, and, and it seems to be now more that it is uh, lobbying, and uh, even though I, there was a, uh, there was a poll out there about what, which actually causes more change. Is it civil disobedience, or is it lobbying? And it was civil disobedience causes more action to happen. Mm -hmm. But yet, we, I mean, uh, what, what, what amazes me is that we, especially, especially in the environmental movement, and I've been in the environmental movement, and I've been in the peace movement. Like I said, I was a co-founder of Code Pink, and I, uh, because I've been jailed so many times, I, I now have a Texas jail project, and we advocate for for the inmates in the county jail is that people do not want to go to places where they put themselves at risk. People, I, I can't tell you how many places I have been to and people are just afraid of going to jail. They're afraid that they will lose their jobs. I remember uh, uh, not too long ago I had my book and they they, they put it for the entire class. Matter of fact, it was, uh, I think it was like Principia College, and it was, it was a private college, and, and they were geared especially towards making their, their, their students so they would be activists, so they would be involved, so they would get involved in the communities. That was their entire, uh, uh, one of their main goals, and they gave their, for the freshman class, they gave all the freshman class that book because they wanted them to understand about civil disobedience, about uh, citizenship within your community. And uh, so I, I remember I gave the uh, the commencement for the, for the whole freshman class, and then I started speaking to a lot of the uh, to the, a lot of the classes, and I was getting a a kind of a puzzling, a puzzling response. It was almost like they were giving back to me exactly what they thought I wanted. And so I, I, I asked the teachers to go because I, I just wanted to talk to the kids to find out exactly if they really believe in it. And like I said, the entire school, that was a guiding principle was citizenship and involvement and being a part of your community. And and basically, it was like that whole class is one, they believed their teachers were hypocrites. They thought they would uh, get in trouble if they, if they did any type of civil disobedience. Uh, some of them were worried about would they even be able to put their kids through college. And these were like 19 year old kids. I mean like freshmen in college. They were that worried and it's like, we're, we're, is where is the courage and the willing to put ourselves wholeheartedly into what we believe in and that we are so worried about what our our careers will be or how big our houses will be or or anything like that and yet the thing of it is is like does anyone does anyone really think what we are doing, like for example, in the peace movement, does anyone really believe what we are doing is going to stop those wars? Tell me, do you believe that marching to the White House, I remember one time I was doing a, uh, we, we were doing a hunger strike on bring the troops home. And this was several years ago. We were bringing the troops home. And I mean, it was it was getting pretty loud. You know, like this, about 5,000 people. And, and, and the thing that is, is 
I remember that big crowd in Lafayette Park, and it was like, we're not going to take it. We're not going to do it. It's now, now, now. And do you know what we did? Walked, marched all the way up to the Capitol steps, turned around, and just come right back. And it's like, do we really think that is going to stop that war? And it's like the environmental conference. I can't tell you how many environmental conferences I have been into. And we always get up there and we tell our story. And, and maybe there's some EPA. Matter of fact, I was in one Houston not too long ago. And there were some EPA guys. And it's like, we're going to help you do some studies. It's like, we already know the town is polluted. We know the bay has got mercury in it. We know the fishermen are eating it. We know, you know, we, we know the workers because we're getting the workers. They got brain cancer. I, I get stacks that high of, of the vinyl, which is, will cause liver cancers like benzene causes leukemia. And what are we going to do? And, and we seem so willing to settle for it. That, that, is, that is my deal is we are so willing to settle for things if we marched one step past this idea and just look behind it. Do you really think another study is going to keep those chemical plants from discharging? I mean, uh, they're self-monitoring. I mean, they report their own violations. I mean, enforcement is shut down. I went down to Corpus Christi, and I had an inspector pull me aside, give me documents, and say, you do something with them, because we can't get them anywhere up to the EPA. We can't get them anywhere in the state of Texas. And so, you know, I don't know. I, I hate for y'all to be my little guinea pig, but, but, it, <laughs> but, but, but it really is. I mean, I have been doing civil disobedience for 21 years. I had taken my shrimp boat and proceeded to sink it on top of their discharge pond. You know, that's how upset I got. I, I, I have to climb chemical tires and chain myself. I've been arrested 50 times, but still our area is being wiped out. The fishermen are gone. I mean, my town is dead. We used to have 100 boats. We don't have them anymore. We got maybe three boats. But, you know, up and down the, the intercoastal canal. It's like bring in the nuclear power plant in Victoria, bring in three coal burning plants down in Point Comfort. I mean, the, the, the intercoastal waterway open for development. And it's like, do we actually believe that we are going to that this government? I, I went to during the, the, the you know, the, the warming, global warming crisis, I even went to Copenhagen on a hunger strike with an international group of young people about like yourselves. And I mean, they, they, they were talking about it has to change, it has to change, America has to take the lead. And what happened? Flat nothing. Flat nothing. And so, if I got any, I don't know, how long am I supposed to get on here? I have no idea. But, but <laughs> if I have to tell you anything, and I've been doing this for 21 years. I'm a co-founder of Code Pink. I'm involved in social justice issues with the county jails. You will even want to get in that subject in the state of Texas. But is that we are not going far enough. If you think, I think it's a good thing we do our lobbying and all, and we do our stuff, and we get on the internet, and I punch our little button, and we get a sent up a note or a fax to so-and-so, but we need to be doing more because there is nothing happening. Like, for example, the BP spill. I mean, one of the, the biggest man-made disaster in the United States Go drill. 